true air of team were by 1550 how about by 1500 without the 50 sir all right and Deccan is my vassal Deccan so apparently if you do this you get an Indian girlfriend that is how it goes right so in order to get the true air of team or achievement we need to have all of these highlighted provinces that basically means all of India with Sri Lanka and the Nepali areas it's not as hard as it seems and it's all about knowing what you're doing so we started as Afghanistan because it is the closest nation to India the easiest would be as Transoxiana as it is considerably stronger but we don't care we're gonna get stronger than them very soon first thing we'll do as always we give out the plus one mana privileges minus 25 advisor cost reduction patronage of the arts and we will be developing the province of Ro once we have encouraged development beforehand we're getting a lot of extra dev cost because we are a vassal so we're only devving this once we're selling the titles to get the money and we're not devving a second time instead we're just seizing the crown lands. we're also going to be allying the nation of Transoxiana both you and Transoxiana start as this loyal towards the Timurids the nations of Khorasan Fars and Sistan are not disloyal but if you get the Mamluks to support your independence and it's actually really easy all you need to do is improve relations with them for a couple of months then you can get all of these nations as well to fight against the Timurids in the independence war. One more thing we'll be doing is we'll be getting the core creation cost reduction. That is going to help us out a lot in uh, coring up these provinces in North India. We're also going to be recruiting the free company in the province of Kabul. On the 11th of December exactly, we will be declaring our war for independence. In our case, they allied the Great Horde and they still have the vassals. But don't let that scare you. It's going to be a lot easier than you would imagine. If you're really scared about the war, you always can improve with the Mamluks or whoever the Timurids are rivaled with. Normally, it's the Mamluks. And that way, you're going to get all of the vassals to rebel and help you out in the war. I personally think this particular thing is all about how much experience you have in EU4. We can also make our leader a general and even get a secondary general. We've given Transoxiana the order to take the province of Herat. And in return, we will be rushing for the adjacent provinces which we have as cores so once we get these cores back we're gonna grow in strength massively come on Transoxiana win this for daddy oh yeah boy oh yeah looks like Khorasan meets back on the menu boys <laughs> We're gonna need more troops and we're gonna recruit another mercenary company. Sadly, the Bukhara band is the only one within range and we're gonna recruit them, obviously. And it would seem we got a pretty Chad air to start our campaign with five admin, really not bad. By taking all of the capital forts of their vassals, which are really easy to take because they're level one forts, as well as winning most of the engagements. I also used mainly my mercenaries since I drain their manpower pool after the battles rather than my Main army and I've actually cut down in size my main army. This did give me enough war score and I can piece them out. I could stay for longer in the war but I really don't want to. 105 out of 104. I cannot take any money. However, the reason I'm piecing out is because I just saw a massive opportunity. The nation of Sirhind did not yet declare war on Delhi but they will soon because they're also supported by Jaunpur. So I'm going to attack the nation of Kashmir which I already got a claim on and as such I'm going to be able to uh, go to war with Delhi afterwards. Of course, we didn't give anything to Transoxiana. Feels Batman, but I don't care about Transoxiana as an ally at all. I'm gonna get better allies in a while. The main thing you need to take away from the initial independence war is the fact that you want to finish it as soon as possible. That means start and finish it as soon as possible so you can make your way into the north of India. And there you go. They did declare their independence war. With a little bit of snaking, we can probably get Delhi soon enough. Whenever you do a true era of team were run it is going to be extremely rng for example i noticed the multan a lot of the times allies shagatai multan is an easy target but because they do ally shagatai it becomes a lot more difficult since i don't really want to have to deal with shagatai early on the sir hind slash delhi path being the easiest at the start as well as expanding into baluchistan and starting from the sind area which is likely what we might do oh this is actually beautiful right now they're not going to join in that is my chance to take advantage 
advantage of Sir Hind and destroy them. Can we get an F in the chat for the uh, nation of Delhi that just got eaten up completely? This Sir Hind war is really not that easy. They actually have a five shock general that's been butchering my troops. I got no manpower left and my mercenary companies are out of manpower as well. So I'm going to have to replace them very soon. And actually that's why I'm going to peace out these guys here. I don't want to deal with them anymore. I just want to peace out Sir Hind and this uh, nation of Ladakh here. How the freaking hell did it get another 9,000 units? Seriously, man. They've been pumping troops out like crazy. But I got the forts, so technically I could piece them out. I can actually piece them out. I'm not going to go for anything else. Just this straight line here. This is everything that I need in order to uh, form the nation of Mughals. The great news is that we now can refresh our mercenary pool. So that means that we can get a brand new free company and even independent and grand company. So actually, I'm just going to disband the other guys. That yeah, go get out of here, Bukhara band we can also pay off all of our older loans in fact we can pay off all of the loans and we can take new loans which are 90 ducats worth not 20 ducats as the ones we had before we can also get a couple more ducats from selling the crown loans again and we're also going to be getting rid of all the miners in the northern part of india because we don't want a major coalition against us we're only going to be attacking the northern parts which are a part of the east aryan group that means all of the bengali guys guys or reasons and so on and this way we avoid getting extra aggressive expansion with the guys in the west which are a part of a different culture group not to mention they are hindu nations so religious wise we're getting less aggressive expansion with the sunni nations too so essentially we're dodging the coalition altogether by attacking different religions and different cultures one after the other and you know what let's get even more money by debasing and then using our ability to lower the corruption from debasing this this way we got 300 ducats already make sure that you always plan ahead for example i just annexed this nation and i already can get the claim on their neighbor because i had my spy network going in that nation because i planned ahead okay and oh my freaking god kangra six freaking hundred days man for this crappy opm i had to wait for that long seriously also guys look at this this is exactly what i was saying because of attacking and annexing different culture groups and different religions we basically have close to nobody in a coalition against us and we finish coring up Delhi and that means we can add it into a state which is the requirement in order to form the Mughals as Afghanistan you can form the Timurids Persia but I highly recommend that you form the Mughals because we need that in order to get the achievement it's a great government that we get as the Mughals and we also become an empire instantly except their new traditions and ambitions which means we got the Mughal ideas that include minus 25 core creation cost reduction which is massive not to mention we get the Mughal D1 which is a special government reform that allows you to assimilate different cultures once we assimilate Hindustani we get another minus 10% core creation cost reduction and to get Hindustani we need to get all of these bad boys over here so we're gonna be focusing on Jaunpur right now that's why I also got the extra mercenary units here you gotta wait for a little bit though because you get new units you got the Indian units so that means we gotta wait for the morale to go back up we're also going to be attacking Mewat at the same time since they don't have any allies. And even the northern guys here so we can finish them off. They're basically allied to each other. I think Simbur is allied to Jampur. Yes, pretty much. So that basically kills off two birds with one stone. We also actually can recruit a lot of other new mercenary companies now. So we've basically refreshed the mercenary company pool also making it a lot easier for us to continue expanding into the Indian parts. Oh, and Jaunpur is actually at war with Mewar. Oh my god, this is going to make it so much easier. Another very vital thing why you need to form Mughals really fast is because you get all of these claims and then with the mission tree eventually you get claims on the entirety of India making this achievement run a lot easier. One thing that might happen is nations like Chanda over here might join in the wars that's gonna make it annoying because Chanda's all the way in the south here So we're gonna have to get there somehow or wait until they get killed by somebody else before we peace out the northern nation Hot dang boy. I thought I was aggressive, but look at this John poor taking half of Mewar. I think I'm really just liberating these people here, man I'm doing them a favor getting rid of this aggressive John Porsky. Well, hello there dear Indian Arkebusiers. How about we try you out for a little bit? That's correct guys 
is Indians are the first ones to actually get fire pips at technology level 5, which is extremely fast compared to any other tech group. I can peace out these guys, however, even though they still have some troops, I got the war score, and that's what matters whenever you do your peace deals. Don't necessarily fight all the battles, drain your manpower, be smart about it, and fight the battles that need to be fought, and focus on taking the vital forts and occupying their country overall. Remember to always concentrate whenever you're expanding into the Indian parts. It's gonna make coring these up insanely cheap, not to mention all the bonuses that we have from uh, the Mughal government type. Yeah, we got 72 overextension. That's actually very little considering the amount of lands that we took. Remember once you do form the nation of the Mughals that you're gonna have to redo your estates over here. So that means we're gonna be giving out to the Brahmins the land rights to get some extra governing capacity and eventually we're gonna get 500 extra governing capacity from all of the estates as well as the dev cost reduction and state maintenance and Rashput autonomy. We also will eventually give out the Rashput regiments, but we're not prioritizing them right now. Coalition seems to be a brewing now. We got Mawa, Baluchistan, and Sindh. Gonna have to deal with them. And I have to mention the fact that originally my plan was to release the nation of Punjab from this province, but because of my particular RNG, I had to attack Sir Hind a lot faster than I imagined I would have to, and it is too late to release Punjab as I would have to release it from Doaba and uh, Sir Hind, not to mention in the 1.32 update, they actually made it a lot easier to take lands and core them directly. It also costs a lot less aggressive expansion. So my theory is, and I'm going to show you guys that I'm right about it, that taking all of the lands directly without vassals is smarter. With certain exceptions, I probably will vassalize Misor and release them and feed them all of the Vijayanagar lands. The reality is that you're going to have a different RNGs than everybody else and you have to make sure that you know what you're doing and mold your run around that particular RNG. Earn Jesus. So I don't want to see you guys in the comment section going, Oh, Ludi, this did not happen exactly the same like in your video. Bad guy. <laughs> I've noticed that in most situations, the northern part of India is the easiest to take. It's a less aggressive expansion because this is just absolute crap land. And they normally ally each other as the bigger nations don't want to ally them. So essentially, if you target these guys out first, you're going to have an easier time and less nations and potential coalitions against you. Another thing I want to mention is the fact that you want to give out the Mandasdras in Officer Corps that gives you the reduction in general cost. You're going to be recruiting a lot of generals and you're doing that because you want to increase the army professionalism which in turn means you can slack in recruitment to get more and more manpower whenever you need it. Do the same thing with the debasing here and you're set for the early part of the conquests financially and manpower wise. I honestly feel like this is some sort of Pokemon game. I mean, I'm basically catching them all, am I not? Alright boys, it is actually time to take Assam out. And we can still get the claim here because... Oh no, not really, Mon Kwang. Really? You're actually taking this from me? Oh, dude, that's so annoying. I'm gonna have to go to war now with the, all of Ava because Mon Kwang is a. Tri they're not a tributary of Ava anymore. What? Okay, that's uh, that's fine in that case. And another claim here, which means that we can attack these boyos. Let's bring our guy back. As our third government reform, of course, we're gonna go for the Mansabdari system that gives us extra governing capacity and army tradition decay reduction. So that's perfect for us. We're also gonna be attacking Ratanpur. So now guys, essentially we have all of the northern parts of India, but don't let that fool you because most of these are crappy three development lands. So we didn't really take that much, but the important part about doing this is that we have expanded our tentacles everywhere. So now all we need to do is just go south and we have two paths, the one in Patna right now, which is super easy to take all of these. And we're also going to be going towards Malwa and these areas soon, but we're going to start another war against Sir Hind in two years. That's going to be a highlight. And for that, we're actually going to be getting some loans indebted to the Jains, which is the same like the regular burger loans. And then we're going to get some extra mercs to deal with uh, Sir Hind. We're not going to cobble trade Malwa because they are in a coalition against us and we kind of don't want to have to fight the entire coalition at least not now well sir hind i don't think you're going to be able to reinforce in time my boy you might have heard of the last of the mohicans but did you hear about the last of the sir hindi i do not think you have heard of them sir and guess what the tragedy is that they got stack and viping in the province of Bera over here whilst defending against the mughal by the way guys in case you didn't know mughals are actually the indian version of the mongols because the 
Timurids claim direct descendants from the Mongols, of course. They were an Uzbek primary nation, although they owned a lot of non-Uzbek land. The leaders of the Timurids were Uzbek, and as such, the initial leaders of the Mughals were also of Uzbek descent, but eventually they obviously became more and more Indian with each passing generation. Sadly, these bastards have all joined into a coalition. They actually had no freaking alliances. They were easy targets, but... Oh, actually, these guys didn't join. Let's attack these boyos. No, they're in a trade league. Oh, they're in a trade league. They're in a trade league with the Madurai, which has a lot of cores on the south of India. Oh my god, I'm so gonna attack you fuckers. A little bit of money, and there is a coalition, but at this point, almost everybody in India, no matter how much I tried to avoid it, almost everybody would join in a coalition. Oh, Bengal just left the coalition. That means the OPMs are likely gonna leave the coalition too. Take a look at my little friend over here with all the juicy cores on the vagina gurians. Skipping forward a little bit, we've uh, fully integrated Sir Hind and we've annexed a few other nations in this area. Now, Mewar actually completely ate the nation of uh, Malwa and released Garha, but Garha is guaranteed by Bahmanis and Mewar, so I cannot really touch it. Jampur here is at war with uh, the new superpower of Budokand. Jampur, why you gotta be so aggressive, man? They literally just got liberated from their former overlords and now you want to take him out do you not have any sympathy for this recently released nation what was that saying venad vidi vici yeah i'm pretty sure it was venad vidi vici jokes aside guys i'm not happy they attacked these guys i was planning to make my truce shorter by attacking john poor via bulldin kind eventually once they guaranteed them, which was almost certain to happen. These areas, in reality, are the cheap... Motherfuckers, you didn't take this one province? All right. All right. That's actually pretty good for me. So, as I was saying, this area is actually the cheapest two core, and it is great to expand in this particular region. I know it looks like border gore, but this is actually a piece of art. And now that we're ready, we can start the total war against every single Indian nation in the world. Nowhere left to hide now, Jampur. <laughs> Stack and vapping. Oh, I'm sorry. What, Bengal? You feeling lucky, punk? The 1.1 morale difference is telling me you're not very lucky, sir. Okay? Gotta be careful with these troops in the south, though. I'm not sure where the Vagina Gar army is, but my main army is trying to catch up from the north. We're eventually gonna meet up in the province of uh, Ginji if I manage to make it here in time before the Vagina Gars spot my mercenaries. Well, it looks like they found me, but it's all good. They attacked me without a freaking general, man. How stupid can you be, dude? Seriously. Jompur, you have been voted the weakest link. Give me all of your land. Yes, much please. Sadly, it's gonna take at least one more war, or two wars to get all of their stuff, unless separatist in force, and I don't see how they're gonna get military access through my land. Manpower in exchange for pissing off Madurai. Well, who cares about Madurai's feelings? I don't. I just don't. The amount of freaking rebels I'm having is just insanely high. I actually have to have a dedicated rebel smashing army whilst I'm at war. So the problem I have with Andra over here is that I did not co-belligerate them so I cannot actually vassalize them and afterwards feed them the cores in uh, Vijayanagar. So I'm just gonna take the money that I can take. Holy mother of a rebellion. In any case, thank you very much Bengal for taking care of my rebels for me. You're such a sweetheart. Hamana 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 hey. Where did Vagina go. Dun, 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 dun. They're dead. Oh, dude, seriously, Bengal, you're the best ever. <laughs> Can we get an actual applause in the comments for this amazingly charitous Bengal who keeps killing off my rebels for me, man? I like how uh, Bengal is basically about to take the fort, but I do have the war score against them, so there's no point, man. Ya lost. I think this is a fairly good deal against the Bengalis. I'm basically taking half of their country, and in the next war, I just have to take the uh, Delton era. Actually, it's gonna have to be two wars because they have 179 province war score. I am doing diplomatic ideas, however, so maybe I'll be lucky enough and finish diplomatic ideas before the next war with them. Well, 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 looks like we've assimilated Garjadi, Bihari, Jarkani, and Oriya people into our government, which means that all of these are basically as good as our own primary culture because of the amazing government reform, the Mughal Diwan. Means we can get new rivals, of course, Bahmanis, and you know what? Let's go for uh, Ming, actually. So for the next few years, we're basically 
actually just gonna wait for my overextension to go down a little bit. I gave some of these lands over to Madurai. Should have probably given these as well to Madurai, but I thought that I have enough admin points. I do have enough admin points, actually. I got 14 admin points per month. My problem is not enough Diplo points, and I'm doing a Diplo idea as well, so that's why I didn't want to actually give Madurai too many provinces. Our troops are in position, and in this war, we can also finally get rid of Kote. That means that all of Sri Lanka is going to be ours. We have our army over here ready to kill him. <laughs> I come prepared, okay? And I think we can get the next tech. Hell yeah, we got cannons. And we're going to use this to lower our already heightened corruption. Oh, I see how it is, Gujarat. You're taking advantage of me destroying Vaginagar. And you want to take some provinces from them, do you? Ooh, the sick faith is enabled. Sadly, I don't need to go sick because I'm already a sick bastard. <laughs> hey, would you look at that? Dunkar appeared and about to disappear very soon. In the name of the British crown, I now claim these areas to be my land rightfully so of course and no i'm not gonna wait for 15 years to attack the bahmanis again because they're guaranteeing the nation of mewar which is one of the nations that i wanted to attack anyway so i might as well have a secondary war against bahmanis oh dude guess what molton just allied john poor so i can cut down my truce from another 10 years to just attacking them right now let's go shall we let's -a go <laughs> whatever the case i don't mind piecing them out right now that means i have a truce until 88 rather than until 1500 finally these freaking hindu rebels have spawned and i'm gonna do something extremely unexpected i'm actually gonna accept the hindu rebels demands and i'm gonna become a hindu nation myself i still keep the mughal d1 because it's not tied to being islamic and i can also get eastern plutocracy but most importantly guys i can now upgrade the vishmaya temple which can give me minus 15 percent core creation cost reduction honestly i'd say it's a little bit of an overkill if you're doing a world conquest it is extremely vital that you get this and that you turn hindu as Mughals because it makes the world conquest a lot faster and easier but if you're not and you're just doing the true era of teamwork you don't really need to do it it's your choice however but by going hindu we have all of these areas except and remember that most of the religiously locked temples in e4 require the hindu religion so that's gonna come in handy massively not to mention we get another minus 10% core creation cost reduction from here and with this temple another minus 15 core creation cost reduction so it's absolutely insane how many reductions we have basically we're gonna be coring provinces for one to four mana points hot dang Jampuri are no more so now the plan is we're gonna take these provinces we cannot really fully annex because they are not a co-belligerated nation and well because of that we're gonna have to pull a sneaky and attack these guys which in turn means we're gonna go to war with John Poor again boom and one more time at war with John Poor. essentially unlimited power oh my dear look at the juicy mewari land over here that also means we can do some of our missions <laughs> the reality is i didn't really bother with the missions too much i did take a lot of diplo mana points hits because of that so i should have actually followed the mission tree a good place would follow the mission tree i didn't but hey now we got some extra claims in these areas apparently when it comes to john poor i'm actually gonna white piece them uh i could take land but i don't want to because in five years i'll be able to fully annex them since they only have 71 percent war square from all of their provinces left and we finished another war against the bahmanis but we're not gonna piece them out just yet because we have to wait until our course finish on the gujarat and sind areas i likely will piece them out once once I start going to war with uh, Jampur in one year. Actually, plans have changed. Apparently, Bahmanis are still guaranteeing Garha. So I'm going to piece them out now. I'm going to be taking all of these lands here. The coalition is actually going into the Arabian Peninsula and in the Indonesian parts. So I'm getting quite a few nations in this coalition now. But I still don't think it's going to trigger at any point. Since most of the nations I have truce with or I've already decimated, essentially. Concentratio, of course. This helps out so much, guys. And one more time let's attack Gurja over here that means we're again at war with Bakmanis. we cannot core the lands we just took but it's gonna be
be a very short war. I literally just want a white piece from them. This way I can time it and I will have Vijayanagar with Bengal war in 93, Bahmani's final war in 94, with Mewar war being the last one in 1500 exactly. Hot damn, that's a huge amount of rebels I just got. So my truce is over with Jampur, but they actually allied Transoxiana. Are you actually serious right now? I have to fight Transoxiana, my good and beloved ally for the entirety of the game at this point. I've also taken another 5 1% loans in order to actually start the upgrade of the Vashani Temple Cure, which means I should have this by 1500 to level 2, which is going to give me minus 10 core creation cost reduction. Unless I use money to push it a little bit, in which case it's going to be a lot faster, actually. These guys honestly just went exactly where my army was. It's as if they wanted to get Shtak and Vipen. I don't get it. All right, we're also pretty short on uh, manpower, so let's get a few generals in the house. Let's liberate Bamiyan from these bastards. By the way, the famous Buddha statues of Bamiyan were one of the earliest Buddhist statues in the world, and they recently got destroyed by the Taliban in order to avoid them getting captured by the allied forces, I guess. And these things were massive, man. I mean, absolutely magnificent. They were built over hundreds of years by generation after generation, handing out the responsibility of finishing these amazing statues. Definitely not something Jompward's gonna see, because they're gonna get Shtak and Vapenicus. Ya died. Well, I definitely made a mistake by not just uh, taking lands from Bahmanis. Oh, hello there, actually, boyos. They've released Ahmed Nagar, which is not bad, because I can use Ahmed Nagar since they're guaranteeing them. And alas, the great war of our century against what is left of the Indian lands has begun. I feel like I'm in the Lord of the Rings right now, okay? I'm fighting the Rurikai. Oh, come at me, Andra. Let's go. Oh, shit. <laughs> no, Vijayanagar, don't, don't, don't join in on that, please. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right, by the time they join in, it's going to be a little bit too late for them. So uh, let's actually stack and vibe in these guys. Is this a new trend with the AI where they don't actually use a general for their armies? I, I don't get this. Oh, dude, I just saw something. Bengals at war with Ayutthaya. This is going to make it very, very bad because if they take any lands, I have to go to freaking war with, uh, I'm assuming, Pegu. Yep, they're the war leader. Oh, we have a, a big battalion over here. Wait, did I just kill my guy? Yeah, it's a very big battalion. We want it as well. Very close to piecing them out here. I think I'm going to take one less province in order to piece them out a little bit faster. Now we just need one more war against Vijayanagar as well as a couple more wars here. Take a close look at how cheap it is to core up all of this stuff and we haven't even gotten all of the bonus bonuses for core creation cost reduction. Well, I haven't finished rebel hunting season, but duty calls as the truce is over with Gujarat, and we gotta go to Ver. This temple here also is level 2 now, and I'm gonna take some more loans in order to make it level 3, and even push it up a little bit. We're gonna try and finish this to level 3 by 15 or 5 or so. The country is now stable enough, we don't have that much overextension anymore, and because of that, we're gonna be truce breaking with Vagina Gar. We're getting a bit of a stab hit of course but it's not a big deal it basically allows us to finish off this nation a lot faster and of course in one month we'll be doing the same with bengal which now has three provinces left so essentially it is now a matter of how fast we can siege these forts and we have artillery so it's gonna be pretty darn fast actually i need some more artillery in this arm and gauda is down another small problem is the fact that these bastards have one more province oh dude are you kidding me that means I'm not going to siege that down. This way I can just um, piece them out now. And after I piece them out now, I can do another no CB war against them. That implies that I'm getting another minus three stab hit. But it is the only way I can actually get this before 1500. So uh, let's actually do it. I forgot to build a fleet before. And then I saw that they're allied to the Maldives. And I was like, oh boy, <laughs> I need to build a fleet, yo. It's all good though. Madurai has a proper fleet. I just need the transport. Port. Truce with Mewar done. That means we can attack. Imagine trying to run away from us, man. All right, we need to actually take this fast. So let's barrage it and assault it. And let's also get rid of Vijayanagar once and for all. Having all of the south of India for ourselves. And this is ours, boys. Come on, one day. Oh, pause. Because we're going to go <laughs> and try and do the same in the north. Come on, come on. We can take it before 1501. All right, boys. Barragio, Assaultio. We're actually making history over here. Come on, 10 days days five days oh my god come on fall 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 oh my freaking god 
29 of December, boys. 29 of December. 1500 is a world record. And with this click, I consolidate my hold. And I got the true air of teamwork achievement one day before 1501, y'all. One freaking day. Wait, no, that's two days. It's 31. Is now yeah. never two days before 1501. And that also means we can do a few more missions around here that offer us some more monies. I love me my monies. Hell yeah, look at all the money here, yo. Holy mother of God, that's actually a lot of freaking money. And with this mission, we can get 10 admin efficiency until the end of the game by releasing the vice royalty of Deccan. Basically, the south part of India will be a very loyal vassal that we can integrate afterwards. And I want to give a very big thank you to all of my channel members, Patreon members, as well as my Twitch supporters. I really wouldn't be able to do this without all of your support. You guys are absolutely amazing.